Hey, just want to take a moment to thank you for listening to this message today. Our prayer for you is that God would speak to you through this word and your life would forever be impacted. Be blessed and don't forget to check back for more messages like this one on championcenter.net. All right, good morning, champion. All right. There's a lot of champions in the house today. Come on, somebody say, I am a champion. All right. How many are ready for the Word of God today? Today. Amen. We are going to have a message entitled today, I Am a Champion. Go with me. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. We're going to look at some of the traits of what a champion is this morning. And I know we got a lot in this building. How many are ready for some barbecue up in here? Ooh, man, I'll tell you that. That is going to be good today. Food truck out there. Don't miss that. Hey, listen, don't be in a hurry just to get out of here. Take a few moments. Congregate. This is your church family. Uh, get to know some people. Get plugged in to some of the things and the opportunities. Uh, we always say it like this around here, that we're not just spectators. We are participators in what God wants to do in and through Champion Christian Center. We're here to love God, reach the one, change the world. Amen? And uh, we change the world. We carry out the vision through getting engaged in our culture, serving on a dream team, uh, getting him, him plugged into a, a champion group, a, a, a champ group where you can grow in your faith, you can help others grow in their faith, and, uh, and I know that God is going to use you in mighty ways. Go with me. Mark chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible says, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door while he was preaching God's word to them four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd so they dug a hole through the roof above his head seeing their faith Jesus said to the paralyzed man my son your sins are forgiven but some of the teachers of the religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves what is he saying this is blasphemy only God can forgive sins Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking so he asked them why do you question this in your hearts is it easier to say to the paralyzed man your sins are forgiven or stand up pick up your mat and walk so I will prove that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said stand up pick up your mat and walk and go home the man jumped up grabbed his mat walked out through the stunned onlookers, they were all amazed. They praised God, exclaiming, we have never seen anything like this before. I mean, that's like a really good thing to say when you're leaving a church service. Amazed. Looking at it saying, we've never seen anything like this before. God is doing some amazing things at Champion. If you, were, if you missed last Sunday night, there were testimony after testimony. I mean, we had so many. We had testimonies on top of testimonies. I mean, God was just, God has done so, such amazing things in these last 30, 60, 90 days here at Champion. And we were just celebrating uh, victory after victory, what God is doing. And that wasn't even all of it. I believe that God's going to continue to do miracle after miracle in this place and we're looking at some key characteristics what does a champion look like the first thing that you need to look at in this passage is that a champion has value for the house and presence of God a true champion has a, a, a value for the presence and the house of God you know what's interesting is if you study this passage and go back early in the in Mark, you'll actually see that Jesus showed up to this region before. It hadn't been his first time. As a matter of fact, the Bible says when he came back into the region this time, that the whole old crowds, they begin to come. They become to come in droves. They become to begin to come. And there were so many of them that the house couldn't contain what God was doing. You know why? Because those people, the first time Jesus, he, he just healed a, a, um, Simon Peter's mother-in-law 
of a fever. But this time when Jesus comes, the news about him had spread. See, a champion is someone, one of the traits of a champion is someone that has a value for God's presence and for God's house. That says, you know what? I'm going to be in church on Sunday. I am planted in the house of God. When the doors are open, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be serving. I'm coming with my best praise, my best worship. I'm coming with my offering, with my tithe. I'm coming to I'm coming to bring my best to God in his house. And I'm telling you, when you do that, God will start to bless your life in supernatural ways. When you put him and his kingdom first, when you say, you know what? We got to get to the house of God where God's presence is. Isn't it wonderful to come in here every time we open the doors and just lift up our hands, just lift up our hearts to him, just engage in worship, just engage in adoration for him. I'm telling you, a champion is someone who makes God's house a priority. Psalm, it says this in Psalm 93, it says that those who are planted in the house of God will flourish in the courts of God. That means when you get planted, then you'll start flourishing. When you get connected to what God wants to do in the earth, I'm telling you, anyone in the Bible that made God and his kingdom and his church and what he was doing a priority, anyone that did that in the Bible always was blessed and blessed in a way where it was visible to the world. And I'm thankful for a church. I'm thankful you're here this morning. I'm thankful you chose to make God's house a priority in your life. That you got up this morning, you could have done a lot of other things, but you said, we are going to the house of God. We are going to a house where miracles can happen. We're going to a house where lives can be changed. Why? Because anytime God's spirit comes, where the spirit of God is, there is liberty, there is freedom, in this place there is a, the ability to be what God has called you to be when you get in God's house amen. how many thankful to be in the house this morning amen 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 the second thing that we see here today is what was interesting about these men is not only did they have a value for God's house and his presence but the second thing mark or trait of a champion is the Bible says in verse 2, second part of it, it says, while Jesus was preaching the word to them, if you rewind, it says there was no more room. There was no more room. Why? Because people had a value for God's house. People were excited about what God was doing. People said, you know what? We're not going to miss out on what God wants to do in my life today. I'm going to show up and be in God's house. I'm going to show up and see a miracle today. I'm going to show up and, and God's going to speak to me a word. God's going to do something in my life. Every opportunity I come into the house of God, it's an opportunity for me to be changed from glory to glory and strength to strength. I'm not leaving here discouraged. I'm not leaving here the same way I came in. I'm, I'm leaving out of here empowered by God's spirit. I'm hearing his word today. How many know the Bible says that by faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There's something about when you get into an environment where God's word is being taught what does it begin to do? It begins to renew your mind. You begin to think God thoughts. You begin to have a greater awareness that God is working in my life. That I'm here not just to struggle or try to survive I'm here to thrive. See when you are a person, a champion values God's word and when you value God's word, it will start changing you. It'll start changing the way you see yourself. It'll start changing the way you treat people and you respond. It will change everything about you and it gives you access into the plans and purposes of God for your life. Amen. See, there's something about, let, let's take a look about the word of God that begins to change us. Go with me for a moment to Romans chapter 12. There's something about the word of God that's so powerful that when Jesus began to proclaim the word, people's faith began to be built, and then miracles were the next thing that began to break out. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. How many, how many this morning God's done something for you? Amen? Amen. Let them be li a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. He goes on. 
Don't copy the behavior or customs of the world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing how? How is he going to transform you into a new person? By changing the way you think. Then you will. So after you stop. So first part is I'm coming here before God to make my life a living sacrifice unto him. That my life is not my own. That my whole body, everything that I am is the Lord's. I've been bought with the blood of Jesus. And the second thing, it says that when I get God's word in me, like Jesus was proclaiming the word over them, when the word gets in your life. See, a champion is someone who can't live without this word. A champion is someone who says, you know what? I'm not here to do it on my own or my own wisdom or my own natural strength. I'm here to get what God says about the matter because I am who he says I am. I'll be what he says I'll be. I'll have what he says I'll have. See, when you get that in your heart, in your mind, when you realize I'm not the same old person. No, I have God's spirit living on the inside of me. I have a supernatural portion. I have an inheritance that is great in God that if he shed his blood on on a cross from me. His blood now qualifies me to walk in greatness, to walk in power, to walk in authority, to be a blessing to your generation. Not just looking for somebody to hand you something. You're looking to bless somebody else. You're looking to hand someone else a blessing. You're looking to be a vehicle, a blessing to your generation. Why? Because once the word of God becomes everything to you, when you get it ingested in your life, you can't help but be changed and transform the way you live will begin to change why because you will begin to renew your mind and the patterns of this world will have been ripped out of your way of thinking see the the many many times the only thing that's limiting people's lives is is old way of thinking you can be saved but not transformed into everything that god has called you to be You can be saved and barely make heaven because you have old mindsets and old ways that you maybe you grew up with or someone taught you this is how you should act or respond. You can be saved and still struggling because you never renewed your mind by the word. But I'm telling you, you can be saved and be whole. You can be saved and be healed. You can be saved and your mind renewed. They say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not here just to be someone walking through life struggling. or just. Try. I'm not here as a victim. I'm here as someone going to walk in victory. I'm someone here that's going to be a blessing to someone else. And every battle, every trial you've been through now, you're going to use it for God and for his glory. And you're going to help somebody else in this life. Amen? Right. See, so a champion is someone who knows what God says about them. It says... This, after you renew your mind, then what? Then what's going to happen? Well, let's, let's see what he says. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. You know, I get that question asked. You know, it's got to be one of the top three questions I've asked over my span of ministry over the last 20 years. When I, people will ask me all the time. They'll say, How did you, uh, how do I know that's God's will for my life? Or how do I know God's will for my life? And they'll say things like that. Well, the Bible gives us very clear instruction here. It says, when the word gets in you, it's like a light that's illuminated on you. (laughs) You see that? See, before before I just, you know, as I was talking, you know, without the word, it's just like, you know, the Bible says it's a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. So now you can see me again. We did that for a powerful illustration this morning. We've been doing a lot of random stuff around here. We need to get that fixed. (laughs) Because I'm running out of ways to tie it in. The Bible says there's a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. So you can't actually walk in what hasn't been illuminated to you. So the word, so it, without the word, you're, you're just trying to figure out, what, am, I, am I going here? Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the will of God, I'm trying to find out where it is. Uh, I, how many know you don't have to walk around trying to guess the will of God? It says, when you get renewed in God's way of thinking, in the word of God, it's actually going to be able to take out of your mindset that the, a way that you should live by your own means, by your own understanding, and it'll start giving you the mind of Christ so that you can think and act the way God's called you to act. 
and the way he's called you to think. So most people are limited by old patterns in their life that they never got right. And now they're still struggling with the same things, whether it's identity or hurts or pains or unforgiveness, because they haven't let the word of God operate in their life. Listen, the word only works in your life. The word, the only word that works in your life is the word you work. So when the word comes to me, I renew my mind. And then it says, and then I'll know God's good, pleasing and perfect will. It's good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect. How are we going to access that? It's through a life that says, God, I'm surrendered to you. I yield myself to you and to your work. Another characteristic of a champion is someone that is yielded to the work of the Holy Spirit. See, you can't do this. You can't become all that God has called you to be. You know, the Bible says that we're set up to reign in this life through the one man, Jesus Christ. But this is not a work of your own flesh, of your own doing. It's a work of God's spirit that he wants to do in your life. See, and the more you yield yourself to the work of Holy Spirit, you see, these men that brought their friend, they knew he needed to hear something. They knew he needed to have an encounter with Jesus. They were willing to let what God wanted to do, his presence, his word, and the moving of the Spirit become the very thing that they were after. See, what you've got to do in your life is you have to make sure that your hunger level or your hunger capacity is always increasing. If my hunger level is here, I'll only be filled to that level of hunger. But if I continue to say, God, I want to be stretched. I want to grow. I want my hunger capacity. I want more of you in my life. I'm willing to take some time, get in your word. What are you doing? You're increasing your hunger level. And the more you increase your hunger level, the more you will begin to grow up in the knowledge of God and what he's called you to do. Many people don't know the will of God because they're not willing to follow the moving and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So, for example, you know, if we have over here, if we had Jeff play the role of the Holy Spirit and we'll have Mary play the old nature, nothing fun, sorry. Man, Mary, got to get in tune with Jesus here. You know, Mary... She actually lost Jesus. How do you lose Jesus? But anyway, not this Mary, but Mary, the mother of Jesus. But anyway, that was right. I want you to see this. You didn't lose Jesus, did you? No, no good. <laughs> Never. Here's, the, here's what the Bible says. See, the more I want to be in tune, like a, a champion hears and begins to move with the Holy Spirit. So if I'm going to lean on my own understanding, see, this is my own understanding. The more I lean on my own understanding, the less I'm hearing what the Holy Spirit wants to do in my life. See, but the more dependent I become upon him. See, my, if my hunger, see, my hunger is going to move me. If I start right here, my hunger is going to move me one, one of two ways. E- either I've got this, and Lord, I know what I'm doing. I really don't need to pray. I really don't need to ask you, Holy Spirit, what you want to do. My, I really don't need to make an investment in my life spiritually. Then what am I doing? I'm leaning on my own understanding. So the more I lean on my understanding, the more blockage there is to hearing the voice of the Spirit in my life. That's why Jesus said in Revelation to every church, he said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has, is saying. In other words, every believer has capacity to hear what the Holy Spirit's saying, but not every believer is actually hearing what Holy Spirit is saying. So why? Because the more you get reliant on self and your own way and your own you know, way of doing your own wisdom, then the less you're going to hear and and the more you're going to miss out on the plan of God. So what I'm doing is when I'm leaning, what does Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 say? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. See, that right away puts me moving towards him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then he says, and lean not on your own understanding." But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. You know, if you're going to see the fullness of God's plan for your life, you've got to become more and more reliant on the Holy Spirit. God, I thank you. Your spirit wants to work in my life. God, what am I doing? The closer I'm getting, the more I'm able to hear. I'm not over there. I'm here listening to what the Holy Spirit wants to say in my life. And guess what? The Bible talks about that still small voice. First Kings chapter 19. God said, I'm going to speak to you, Elijah. 
and he went, he came, it, there was an earthquake and there was a mighty storm that blew through and all of these things. And the Bible says that God wasn't in the earthquake, he wasn't in the storm, but the Bible says that in that moment, God spoke and God's voice was heard in the still, small voice. So he's speaking and the more dependent I become upon him, the louder it is to my ears to hear. The more I'm dependent on me, I got this, I really don't need it. You know, every now and then I'll do this religious thing. But see, the more reliant on me, the less I'm hearing. But the more I'm saying, God, I'm not leaning on my own understanding today. I'm leaning on you. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm, I'm done leaning on my own ability to understand how your ways work in my life. And now I'm leaning in. to See, see I'm close enough that he could whisper something and I would hear exactly what he's saying. See, you've got to train your heart and your spirit to hear. Right. You have ears. To, he, that's why he said, Let, he, he who has ears. That's why Jesus said in John 10, my sheep will know my voice. You have ears to hear. It's just, are you yielded to God's spirit working in your life? Or are you trying to do it in your own strength? I'm not even talking about your living in sin today. I'm just saying, if, do you, if you don't have any hunger level or capacity in you, you're probably not hearing the voice of God like he wants you to hear it. And that's not a condemning thing I'm saying. That's an encouraging thing that he wants to speak to you. He wants to reveal his will to you. He wants to say the things to you that are going to propel you into the things of God. Amen. You know, I just find myself just asking God, God, I thank you. You're increasing my hunger capacity. And what am I doing? And then what do I do? I just feed my spirit. I just start worshiping God. There'll be times where I'm in the car, in between meetings, on the way somewhere, well, you know, on, on the road. Whatever I'm doing, I just take some time and I'm just constantly get, trying to get in that place of communion with Him. And then what I find is that as I'm walking, I'm actually leaning into Him. So now, my hunger is actually drawing from the Spirit of God what He desires to do in my life. See, it's one thing to say, God, I'm going to do this. Will you bless my plans? It's a whole other thing to say, God, I'm dependent on you. I, see, here's that, that's the thing about God. God will give you the dream and the plan. No, God will give you the dream of where He wants to take you. But he doesn't always give you the step-by-step -step plan. I'm taking you to the promised land, he told the Israelites. Oh, man, is that going to be good? Woo. But how you get there, he said this in Joshua chapter 3. He said, consecrate yourself because tomorrow the Lord is about to do amazing things among you. They didn't know the full plan of how he was going to get them there. He said, when the Ark of the Covenant begins to move, make sure you move with the Ark. Make sure you move. What would that be today? That would be the same equivalent to the working of God's Spirit in our lives today. God's about to do some amazing things. Make sure your heart and your life are consecrated to what God wants to do. Make sure there's a level of hunger and desire because that hunger and desire is going to cause the breakthrough of God's Spirit to operate in your life in an even greater dimension than the still small voice becomes something loud and something you hear consistently and he's saying this is what you need to do this is what you matter of fact it will actually become first nature to you because it should be first nature because the old nature is gone your new nature has come now my new nature hears the voice of God my old nature couldn't hear the voice of God but my new nature can why because I'm a child of God because his spirit lives in me and then as I'm leaning into him I'm just hearing him speak to me I'm hearing him minister to me you know there's sometimes in my life I'll just start praying out in the Holy Ghost I'll just start praying praying the bible says in first corinthians 14 that he who speaks in a, in that heavenly language in a tongue actually speaks directly to god speaks to him what am i doing sometimes i don't know what to say so you know what i just do i just start praying out of my spirit and my spirit is communing with God and he's building me up. The Bible says it, that we, when we pray in the Holy Ghost, Jude 24, uh, it says when we, when we do that, we're building up a most holy faith within us that something's being loosed in my life. That as I pray out, you know what he says? He says that in Romans 8, 26, that when you pray out, you don't know how you should pray, but the spirit prays through you. First Corinthians 14 also says that when you pray in the Holy Ghost, my spirit is praying. Mm. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. 
I need him more. That's why, that's why Paul said, I, I don't stop praying in tongues. I don't stop. He said, I actually wish you all would pray in tongues. That's who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. So you don't like, you don't like praying in the Holy Ghost then you won't like two-thirds of the New Testament because Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament under the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost because he was a man who prayed in the Holy Ghost, who knew how to pray in tongues. And I'm not ashamed to pray in the Spirit. I'll tell you, it gives me divine access to the mysteries of God. It gives me access to the plans of God. It helps me hear the voice of the Spirit. Why? Because when I get saturated in Him, when I start communing with Him, even at higher levels beyond... See, what God wants to get into your life will be beyond what you can imagine with your mind. So you've got to receive it somehow. You've got to get it in your spirit first. He'll bypass what you have because your mind can't yet receive it unless you're in the Spirit. And then when you're in the Spirit, like, Paul, like John was, he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And what happened? God gave him revelation on how he once, got, once he got in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, then he received the revelation. That's why we have the book of Revelation. revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. His mind, can, I mean, do you read about that stuff? I'm like, all right, Lord, you're going to have to help me with this one. <laughs> so wait a minute. This beast comes up and then these horses and, I mean, can you see him trying to receive that without being caught up in the spirit? With, with this human reasoning? Well, God, all right, God, so you're telling me there's going to be these horses. One's, you know, got a pale horse. We got a red horse. I mean, what is this? You know, like my little pony. I mean, what? <laughs> Can you imagine trying to, like, God, like, what, why? He had to be caught up in the spirit so he could receive it in his spirit and his natural mind wouldn't shut it down. There are some plans God wants to get to you that are going to come through the power of the Holy Ghost. Not going to, and it will actually, when you get it in your spirit, it will renew your mind to say, that is the will of God for me. I don't know how, but I know he's going to get me there. See, he gives you the dream, gives you the destination, and then he said, you're going to have to be reliant on my spirit. You're going to have to, instead of leaning on your own understanding, you're going to have to lean on him. Because the more I lean, the easier it becomes to hear what he's saying in my life. And a champion is someone who's not only uh, just has the Holy Spirit, but that is dependent on the spirit of the living God to access my destiny, to access the purpose and the plans of God. I need the Holy Ghost in my life. I need him to fill me up, to overflow, so that I walk in the mind of God and the will of God. Have you ever thought about that? With some things that God's going to get to you, he's going to reveal it to your heart and your spirit first. So if you don't have a renewed mind, your mind will shut down what God wants to do in the spirit. Oh, there's no way that could happen. Lord, how how are you going to do that? Like, how am I getting to the promised land? How are we getting that next multi-million dollar facility? See, if I start leaning too hard there, I stop. See, the voice is a still small voice. So when I start leaning here, the voice becomes more distant. But I got to break that off. <laughs> and, but here's the thing. See, the more I'm leaning, then the more I'm trusting. Because he said trust was the first key. Trust in the Lord is the first key to my leaning. I want to lean into him. Because the more I trust, the more my faith and my dependency is in him and not over there. See, it's the more it's there, I'll tell you, I get in turmoil. The more it's there, I'm like, all right. You ever see me during the week? If I'm in between appointments, I'm just driving through the tr- driving through the hills. All right, is that it, Lord? I just start asking him, is that it, Lord? Where's it at? Is it land? Is there a building? Where, where, where's that next step? I'm driving. You know, uh, th- I did that. I was in between appointments. I was just driving. I was like, Lord, where is it? Lord, where is that? You know, like, he's going to, I just trust he's going to, like, you know, a bright light from him. <laughs> just illuminates. And I, oh, I see the light. I'm, like, driving. <laughs> I just drive to him. And all of a sudden, I just start laughing. Oh, Lord, you must think I'm crazy. 
I'm like, then, then I thought, well, he doesn't think I'm crazy because he actually made me. And anyway, I started having to <laughs> talk with him. Like, I know none of you do that. You know, I mean, your pastor is doing. And as I was talking to the Lord, I just started laughing in my spirit. Because the Lord, he was just reminding me, he's like, I got this. Like, just settle down there, young man. <laughs> I get your heart. I love your heart. But it's still a work of my spirit. Your job is to stay in faith because it's your faith that will actually keep you secure and the seed that I put in you keep it protected so that it doesn't get snuffed out by doubt, unbelief, or your own understanding. Because your own understanding is limited. Your own understanding is, I know where I'm going, but I don't know how to get there. But when I lean into him, I, I, I just started laughing and I felt the joy. And the spirit of God just swelled up within me. I started laughing. I thought, man, I, I got to be real close to this thing. We got to be real close to what God's about to break yeah. forth. Yeah. And you know what I did? I just said, Lord, I trust in you with all my heart. I'm not leaning on my own understanding. But in all my ways, what am I doing? I'm acknowledging you. Amen. See, when you have a, a, a trust, you stay free. Yeah. I don't want to get all bound up. I don't want to get all tripped up. I don't want to get in doubt because that doubt and that unbelief will actually cause my faith to be diminished and choke the life of God, what he's trying to do out of me. Because when you lean in your own understanding, it begins to actually cut the flow of God's power and grace off your life because it's all about you. But the more I say I trust in him, the more it opens up the flow of grace. See what I'm doing? When I do that, I say, Lord, I trust in you. And it's actually opening up a, a flow of God's grace and power in a greater dimension. Why? You don't believe me? What did Paul say? He said, he said, Lord, I want you to take this from me. And God said, I'm not taking it from you. I'll just cause my power to increase upon you. Yes. I'm not going to take you out of what you're walking through. I'll actually just give you more power than that thing that it's up against. He said, I'm not going to just remove everything around you and, and then you'll, you'll be good. He said, I'm going to show you that my power is actually perfected and made perfect in your weakness. In, and what was he saying? In your dependency, in your leaning into God is where the strength of God dwells within a man or woman is found in the leaning into of God. When I lean, I, I'm saying, I can't do it in me. But I trust that you will do it through me. Amen. And you will do what no man can do. Right. So when you, when you trust, you walk in freedom. I'm not worried. God's got this. You're a champion today. Yeah. The last thing that you need to see is that champions keep believing. Yeah. Keep moving in faith. Champions Make room for someone else to come. Champion, those four men said, you know what? We got to get our friends to Jesus. I want to challenge you today. They said, we're not going, to, we're not going to, to meet with Jesus until we bring somebody. That's why I thank God for the miracle testimonies. I thank God for what he's doing in this place. I thank God for, for my new brother right here, Cain. As a result of Mike, Freddie, inviting you. They just kept inviting you. Now you're here every week. Got that good-looking hat, champion hat, champion gear. God's just doing You got to baptize Sunday night. Why? Because champions don't just think about themselves. Think about this. A sign of maturity is that you don't just feed yourself. You can actually feed others. A sign of maturity is that you don't just serve you, you serve someone else. Hashtag, I'm on a dream team. Hashtag, I'm in a champ group. Hashtag, I'm, I'm serving something. I'm serving some. Because a sign of maturity is that once I receive, I freely give. Like if you get mature enough, you can't help but give. Like if you get filled up with him enough, I can't help but bring some. I'm, he, they were like, we're not, we're not going to go. To this meeting, unless we're bringing our friend to Jesus. And the Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, the faith of the four men, it was the faith of the four men. 
Because if it would have been the paralytic, he said, I see your faith, your faith, individual faith. He said, I see their faith. That they got them to Jesus. I'm telling you, we need to bring people. Champions are bringers. Champions bring people. Champions invite people. Champions let somebody else know what God is doing. Listen, miracles are breaking out. We got to get our friend to Jesus. And then you know what the last thing is? I know I said that was the last, but I was just kidding. Champions see miracles as their portion. Because here's the thing, God will make a way where there is no way. See, I would have thought that why don't you just try to use the back door? Like, but here's the thing, God will make a way where there is no way. That means this, that there was no way possible to get in the front, the back. I mean, the place was packed. But you know what? Their faith in operation, their trusting in God, their value for the word, their value for the presence, their value for the reaching the one was in place. And because all those things were in place, because these four men were champions, God made a way where there was no way. God said, I see where they're at. I see the steps they're taking. And I'm going to make a way where there is no way. And God gave them some kind of divine wisdom. Some kind of crazy outside the walls, literally, idea. To go climb up on the side of this house. Get up on the roof. Now, I mean, have you ever thought about this? I mean, they're holding this man that's paralyzed. This doesn't mean them getting up on the roof. They had to somehow, even if they had a stairwell... To the sort, they would have still had to try to push him up on the roof, bust the roof out, and go down. But that's what faith in operation will do. Faith in operation will cause God to give you divine ideas, divine wisdom, in a way where now the un- He'll unlock. He'll begin to make ways where there is no way. He'll give you ideas. He'll give you a strategy. He'll, get, he'll cause streams to come out of the desert, he said. He'll cause mountains that are before you to be removed. I'm telling you, he's a way maker. Because if you will do these things, if you allow your heart to be in faith, if you allow yourself to trust in him if you allow not your not to lean on your own understanding but to lean into the voice of the holy ghost if you allow for that in your life i'm telling you miracles will be your portion breakthrough will be yours because god will make a way where there seems to be no way in the natural he will break it forth for you go ahead and stand and thank god he's making a way where there is no way i see where he's taking me I don't know how to get there step by step but thanks be to God I have an advocate his name is Holy Ghost I have a teacher his name is Holy Ghost I see where I'm going but I don't know every step of the way but that's okay because I'm leaning on the arm that is never going to grow weak I'm leaning on the strong arm of God I know in my own strength I'm not enough but with him I know all things are possible and he's making a way where there is no way he's creating things out of nothing he's speaking and it's beginning to break forth in Jesus mighty name and I declare open doors I declare roofs being opened up I declare supernatural activity over your life today as you yield as you know that God is the one that's leading you you're going to see the greater things in the mighty name of Jesus I decree it I declare it over you it shall be done in Jesus name hallelujah this is not the end that door that won't open he'll open up a roof hallelujah oh there is no limit to the child of God because he whom the son sets free is free indeed and walks in that freedom and that power hallelujah hallelujah thank you God I thank you for it God go ahead and thank him hallelujah thank you for making a way thank him for the strong arm Oh, I don't lean on my own understanding. I lean on you and the work you're doing in my life. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. 
We thank you for the Holy Spirit working in and through every believer here today, filling them up to overflow, filling them up to overflow in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah.